Alright, hello, what's up guys? Today we're doing a video on how to do with Windows 10 and Ubuntu 18.04. Alright, so getting right into it, what you want to do is go into your start menu and type in disk mgmt.msc and hit enter. And this will open up the Windows Disk Management tool. This is where we're going to create the space for Ubuntu to use later on. Alright, so on the drive you want to install Ubuntu on, so we're going to sort on our C drive. You want to find your C partition and right-click it and click Shrink Volume. Once you reach the screen, you can choose how much space you want Ubuntu to have in megabytes. So the way to do it is you basically, you get the size you want Ubuntu to have, times it by a thousand, and that's the number of megabytes you want to give it. So if we want to give Ubuntu, say, 40 gigabytes, we would type in 40,000, because that's 40 times a thousand. Um, I wouldn't recommend going below 20, that's sort of the minimum you require. 20 to 30 is the sort of minimum I would recommend. Um, but anything above that is obviously better. So we've got 40,000 megabytes or 40 gigabytes. We're just going to press shrink. And we've now got our 40 gigabyte partition over here, which is unallocated. This is where we're going to install Ubuntu on later on. So we can close out of disk management now. And now the next step is to go and disable fast startup. The easiest way to do this is to go into a web browser and go to this page here on 10forums.com. And you want to scroll down until you find the download for it, until you find to turn off fast startup and then this one here, and you want to click download, and you want to save it somewhere, open the folder, and then here you've got your turn off file setup.bat file. You want to right click it, run as admin, hit yes, and there we go, file startup has been disabled. You can also go into Windows Power Options to do this, but it's it takes a little bit more effort, and on some computers it doesn't appear in the same place. So this is the easiest catch-all way to go and do it. So you can close out of that now. And the next thing to do is to go and download Ubuntu. So you want to go over to ubuntu.com in your web browser and you want to go to the download at the top and click on Ubuntu desktop. Here you can choose what version you want. I'm going to go for Ubuntu 18.04.1 LTS, but you can go for any version of Ubuntu you want. And then you want to go and just click download and wait a few seconds. And you can save it. And then you want to wait for Ubuntu to finish downloading. And then once the download is finished, you can open the folder and this is the ISO for installing Ubuntu, which we're going to be using later on. So the next thing to do is to go and create a bootable USB stick. The easiest way to do this is to use a tool called Rufus at this link here. And I've got a tutorial as well on my channel on how to create a bootable USB stick. Uh, so essentially you want to go to this website here and you want to download the latest version of it and hit save. And then you can open it. And then once Rufus opens it, it will ask if you want to let it check for updates, you can just click yes. And then here's where you're going to create your bootable USB. If you go and watch my video, it will teach you exactly how to do it. But the basic idea of it is, is you'll choose your USB stick from here and you will choose your disk image from here. So you go and click that and you go and choose your Ubuntu file. And then you can go and just press start and it will write it to the USB so you can boot from it later on. So once you've gone and you've watched that video or you've created your bootable USB stick, um, the next step is to go and actually restart your computer and boot from it. Now the thing is with that is it's different for every single computer. So every single laptop, computer, motherboard, they've all got a slightly different way of booting from USB sticks. But the basic idea is to, you want to go into your BIOS by pressing, uh, it's usually delete, escape, F11 or F12 as your computer's turning on. And it will let you choose what device in your computer to boot from first. And you want to change it from your hard drive or SSD to the USB first. So it chooses that one. Um, after that's done, you can save the changes and you can restart. And the next time you turn your computer on, it will boot from the USB stick instead. Uh, like I said, it's different for every single computer. So the best way to do it is to go and search Google for your exact computer or motherboard. And it will tell you how to change the boot order for your specific computer. Once you've finished creating your bootable USB stick and changing the boot order for your computer, you can make sure that the USB is plugged into your computer and then you can go and restart it one more time and then it should boot from your Ubuntu USB first. And I'll be right back with that and I'll show you how to install Ubuntu then. So while your computer's booting up, you might see this screen and you'll just need to sit there for a second and it should pass in a minute once it's configured itself. And then once everything's loaded, you will see that Ubuntu is now running from the USB stick. Okay, so from this screen, you want to choose your language down here on the left, and then you want to go and click Install Ubuntu. From this screen, you can go and choose your keyboard layout. I'm going to choose English UK and English UK on the right, because that's the keyboard that I'm using. Then click Continue. And then here, you can choose the type of installation you want. Uh, you can choose normal installation if you want all of the software, or minimal if you just want the most basic things. And then down here, you have the option to install um, additional graphics hardware or Wi-Fi drivers and stuff like that, because some computers require additional software for it all to work. What I would do is, if you don't mind about installing proprietary software, is tick this on anyway, and then choose if you want all of the stuff or just some of the stuff. 
so you can go for normal or minimal. Just for the purpose of this install, I'm going to go through with the minimal one. And then you can go and click continue. Once you've reached this screen, you can choose if you want to install Ubuntu alongside Windows 10, erase the disk and erase Windows and install Ubuntu only, or you can choose something else. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go and choose something else. But if this option does come up for you where it says install Ubuntu alongside Windows 10, then go for that because it will make everything much, much easier. But like I said, for the sake of this tutorial, just in case this doesn't come up for you, this option up here, I'm going to go and choose something else. And then you can click continue. And then once you've reached the screen, this is where we're going to be partitioning the disk. So as you can see here, we've got our free space, which we created in Windows earlier. So what you want to do is you want to click on it and press the plus. And then once you're here, we're going to go and create the swap area. So what the swap area is, it's basically virtual memory. So if you ever run out of RAM on your computer, uh, Ubuntu will use that as well at the same time to so it can swap out um, stuff which isn't currently being used. So the idea of this is, is you either want to use around the same amount of space as RAM you have, or a little bit more. So what I would recommend is either use the same amount or double. That's what I would recommend. So in this computer that I'm using right now, I've got three gigs of RAM. So I'm just going to type in 3000 megabytes. And you want to set, set the logical space at the beginning. And then you want to click this drop down here and click swap area and press OK. After the swap's been created, you want to click the free space again, click the plus, leave this here default because that's the rest of the space on the drive. Logical, beginning of the space, ext4, and you want to click this. Click that slash there and press OK. Once that's done, we're all ready to go and we can just go and press install now. If this is all OK and that's the correct drive, then you can just go and press continue. When you reach this screen, you can choose your location. So I'm just going to go and choose here and click continue. And then here you can customize your computer's name and username and password and everything. So I'm just going to quickly do this. I'm going to choose the name as just Adam, computer's name as Adam Ubuntu. Username Adam's fine, and I will type in a password. And then you can choose if you want it to log in straight away when you turn your computer on, or require the password to log in when you turn it on. And then press continue. And then when you reach this screen, it's just a case of waiting for Ubuntu to finish installing. You can click this little down arrow here to expand and see what's going on, but otherwise you just need to wait for it to finish. After it's finished installing, you'll be greeted with this message saying installation complete, you need to restart your computer in order to use it. So what you want to do is you want to click restart now and you want to make sure you take the USB stick out because otherwise your computer will try to boot from the USB stick again. But what we want to happen is your computer will boot from your hard drive or your SSD like normal so you can get into using Ubuntu. So then you can just go and click restart now and you can wait for your computer to restart and then after that's done you'll be ready to use Ubuntu. If you get to this screen where it says please remove the installation medium then press enter, you want to unplug your USB stick and then press the enter key on your keyboard. When your computer boots up again, if everything went correctly, then you'll be greeted with the Grub Bootloader where you can choose to either boot into Ubuntu or Windows 10. So you can use the arrow keys and the Enter key to select things. You can go down to the bottom with the arrow keys and press Enter to boot into Windows 10. Or you can stay at the top and press Enter to boot into Ubuntu, which I'll show you just now. At this point, when Ubuntu is loaded in, you can hit Enter to log into your profile. Type in your password if you uh, set one up and then you're ready to use Ubuntu. You'll be greeted with this Welcome to Ubuntu screen, so you can just click through here and just press next, next, and next, and done. And then once you've done with all that, you'll be in and ready to use Ubuntu, just like you would with any other computer. As you saw a moment ago when we were booting the computer up, we were greeted by the Grub Bootloader. As you can see, you know, looking at the Grub Bootloader, it doesn't look the best, and you might want to change the order in which Ubuntu and Windows 10 are placed in case you would like, in case you more often the, um, go into Windows 10 and Ubuntu, you might want to have Windows 10 at the top. So I'm going to show you an optional step now how you can customize your Grub Bootloader so you can have it the way you want it to be. You can change the color, the font, the background, uh, all that kind of stuff, and especially, most importantly, the order of the items in the list. So what you want to do is you want to go over to your web browser here on the left, and you want to search for Grub Customizer. Hit enter. And at the top, you'll see a Launchpad PPA by Daniel Richter. You want to click that. And on this page, you will be greeted with these commands here. What you want to do is you want to go into your apps, type in terminal, hit enter to open the terminal. So here we go. And you want to copy each one of these line by line, paste into the terminal, hit enter, type in your password, hit enter again. And that will add the PPA to Ubuntu. And then once it's done, you want to do the next one. So copy this second one along here, paste it into the terminal the same way, hit enter. And then when that one's done, you want to do the last one here to actually install the Grub Customizer. And I'll ask you if you want to install it, type Y and hit enter. 
And then once it's all finished, we can type in exit, hit enter, close out the web browser, and then in our apps down here, we can find the Grub Customizer, which we can open there, type in our password, and here we are greeted with the Grub Customizer. As you can see here in the Grub Customizer, we have all the items in the list here, and we can go through, we can change our settings here about um, how Grub launches things. Over here in the appearance settings, we can go and change the font, the color of the background, the text, and all that, and we can even have a background image if we wanted to, and then we can save the changes there, and it will write it to the Grub configuration, and the next time we boot our computer up, we will be greeted with this menu instead, and it will have all of our change settings. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you to dual boot Windows 10 and Ubuntu. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.